Hi, my name is Lois James, and I am the Director of Leadership Development for OPEX Solutions. OPEX stands for Operational Excellence, and we are a team of trusted advisors who come in and work with you and your organization to be more successful. So we develop leaders at all levels, and we improve processes to help you achieve operational excellence. So what I'm talking about today is something that I am very passionate about, working smarter, not harder. Okay, there's this big misconception out there that there's a huge difference between people who are very successful and people who are average. And the misconception is because there's really only a slight edge between people who are very successful and people who are average. And what I wanna to do today is give you some of those slight edge tips to help you be more successful and work smarter, not harder. <clears throat> okay, so I wanna give you an example just to set the tone on what I mean by slight edge. And think about a horse race. And when you think about these incredibly strong, powerful horses that are running around the track, and when it comes down to the end of the race, it may just be a slight edge, a nose that that first place horse beats out that second place horse, right? So it's not this huge difference between the two. It's a very small difference. But what's the difference in the prize money from that horse that comes in first and the horse that comes in second? A lot, right? So the first place horse, is he that much better or more successful than the horse who came in second? No, sometimes it comes down to just a nose or just that slight edge. So another quick example, um, <clears throat> think about golf tournaments. And when you see these uh, men and women, these professional golfers who are out there in a tournament, and some days they're, or some tournaments they're working or playing one or two or three days. And so they're playing golf that whole time. But again, when it comes down to the end, it might be one or two stroke difference between who comes in first place and who comes in second place. So is the golfer who wins the tournament in first place that much better than the person who comes in second place? No, one or two strokes at the most, but what's the difference in the prize money? A lot. So that's what I'm talking about when I talk about slight edges. So there are lots of tips out there, and I'm going to give you a couple of them right now that you can start using right away to help you be more successful than average, okay? And I do want to tell you real quickly that the owner of our company, Mike Lee, has a series of slight edge videos on our OpEx YouTube channel that you can go and watch at any time. All of these um, <clears throat> videos are less than two minutes long and they will give you all kinds of slight edges to help you be more successful. So check them out. All right, so the first thing I wanna to talk to you about is planning, okay? And when I mean planning, um, how many of you have a planner? whether it's a paper planner or an electronic planner, a calendar, a calendar that you use every day, <clears throat> okay? So when you use this calendar, do you use it for planning purposes? And you should be, and that's the slight edge. And I'll tell you why. Because when we take five to 10, maybe 15 minutes at the beginning of every one of our days, and we plan how we're going to use our time that day, all right? So what you wanna do before you start your day, before you start your emails and get into meetings and answering the phone, take five <clears throat> to 10, 15 minutes and make a list of what do you need to do today? 
What do you need to accomplish today? What are the tasks that you need to do today as part of your job to be successful? Okay, make a list of what are those things that I need to get done? Maybe three or four, maybe five things. And once you make that list, next I want you to prioritize them. What is the task or the, the activity, the responsibility that I need to do first? What is the number one priority that I need to get done today or this week? Okay, that's what I mean by planning in the morning. And then once you have your list and you've prioritized it in what needs to be done first, second, third, then you need to take a look at your calendar or your planner and decide when am I going to get these things done? You need to plan time, make time to get these high priority tasks accomplished. Because if you don't make time for them, they're probably not going to happen, okay? So before you start your day, <clears throat> make a list, prioritize it, look at your calendar, find time on your calendar that you can carve out so that you can spend time accomplishing or achieving those tasks that you need to get done. So if you have um, a two to three or um, time from two to three in the afternoon, set that up as an appointment that you are going to have uninterrupted focused time to work on and be able to accomplish those tasks that are most important for you to get done today, okay? And then just as important as planning your day is closing out your day. So at the end of your day, it's just as important to go back and look at your list that you made for the day and look at it and say, what did I get done? What did I accomplish that I wanted to get done today? And if you got it done, yay, what a great feeling to be able to check it off your list and say it's done. And then sometimes it doesn't get done. There's items on our list that don't get done, all right? And that's okay too. Life happens, things happen. Um, but what you want to do when we close out our day is look at those items and say, okay, for example, maybe one of my things I needed to get done today was to call Diane, right? And at the end of the day, I didn't get her either you know, I called and I got her voicemail. She called me back. We kept missing each other. Whatever the reasons are, I didn't call and talk to Diane today. So what I need to do with my list is take that task and either put it on my list for tomorrow or next week or whenever it's applicable, right? <clears throat> and so by doing that, there are things that will not fall through the cracks or get forgotten about. And at the end of the day, if we take all of those items that we didn't accomplish and put them on another day, then we can close work, we can close our books, close our um, computer and go home, turn work off. That is an important part and a slight edge for all of us is that we need to be able to turn work off when we're finished for the day to spend time in our personal life or with our families or whatever is important to you, okay? Um, I was one of those people before that, you know, before I closed out my day, I would be all night worrying, oh, I forgot to call Diane or I forgot to send Peter that email that I was supposed to send him. And so while I'm home, I'm still thinking about work or I'm thinking about it when I'm trying to fall asleep at night. And that's not a good way to fall asleep if I'm worried about things I haven't gotten done at work, right? So closing out our day is very important. It's just as important as planning your day to start with. So that's another slight edge. Work smarter, not harder. And don't try to remember everything up in your head. Write it down. If it's important to get done, write it down and then work on it the next day. Okay. 
All right, the next slide edge I want to talk to you about, because this is one thing that uh, so many of my clients and so many things that I used to struggle with, with my productivity during the day, is managing interruptions. All right, so I know this is um, maybe different whether you're at home or you're in the office, but the concept is still the same. So make it apply to whatever the situation is for you, okay? Um, so the first one I want to talk to you about is what I call the jack in the box. <laughs> and what I mean by that is when I was in an office setting and I was managing a healthcare agency, um, I called it the jack in the box because every time I thought of something that I needed to share with one of my coworkers, I would jump up from my desk and I'd run over to their office and I would tell them whatever it was. So I felt like a jack in the box. I was jumping up all day long and running to somebody else's office. And what does that do? It interrupts what I was doing and it interrupts the person that I go and see. So it really is a productivity killer when you have that many interruptions during the day. So the way to um, manage that is what we call a conference planner. Very simple concept, slight edge. This is a game changer. It was a game changer for me. And what this means is you take a, as easy as a piece of paper and you put the person's name on it. Now, it can be somebody that you work with all the time. It can be somebody, um, people that you manage, people that you work with in other departments, um, somebody that you, you know, have a lot of interaction with. And what you want to do is put their name on this piece of paper. <clears throat> and as you think of things that you want to talk about with them, you write it under their name. You write it on the list. So instead of jumping up and running over to their office to tell them about it, write it on that piece of paper. And the next time I think of something else, so I'll use my coworker, Diane. If I have Diane's name on my conference planner, as I think of things that I need to talk about with Diane, I write it down on the list. If I have something for my other coworker, Peter, I will write it on the list. So then the next time that I do talk to Diane, I can knock out three or four or five things, whatever's on my list, I can knock it all out at one time instead of interrupting her multiple times during the day. And if she's got a list running for me, then we talk about those and same thing. So she's got a list for me. I've got a list for her. And when we do talk, we knock it all out at one time. Now, it depends on how often you have interaction with these people. So in my last job, when I was managing the healthcare agency, my right-hand person was a woman named Michelle. And we worked very closely together. And so we had a set time at three o'clock every day in the afternoon. So all day when I had things that I needed to talk to her about, I wrote it on my list and she did the same for me. So when we got together at three o'clock, we went through our list and sometimes, some days it would take five minutes, other days it would take 15 to 20 minutes, but we did it once a day rather than interrupting each other multiple times during the day. And when you're managing a lot of people, think of the number of interruptions that you have with these quick questions or quick statements that could be saved up and gone over at one time instead of multiple times during the day. <clears throat> okay, conference planner, slight edge, try it, it works, it's easy, it's simple. Have people do it, you'll see the difference immediately. Okay, um, the next thing I wanted to talk about <laughs> is those drop-in visitors. Now, again, this is more um, if you're in an office type setting rather than in, in, at home and you're working a remote, but we still have interruptions at home too. So the concept applies, again, I'm just gonna use the example of an in-office setting. So when you have that drop-by visitor, okay, um, there's a couple different ways that you can handle this. Now, when, <clears throat> when I was talking earlier about setting a time 
for you to work on a report or something that you need to get done. If I have an appointment set up for myself that I'm working on from two to three this afternoon, right? So when that time comes, I'm going to close the door on my office. Yes, it's okay to close your door on your office. I think a lot of times we have this mindset that if we close the door, that means that we're unavailable to people that we work with. That's not. Another slight edge is changing that mindset. It doesn't mean that we're unavailable. It just means that we now have some focus time for an hour and we can be available at another time. So if people are not used to you shutting your door, you can start out by putting a little sticky note on the outside of your door that says, I'm unavailable from 2 to 3 p.m. Please come back at 3. Okay, so you put that note on your door, you close your door, and you have that uninterrupted time. If somebody knocks on your door during that time, either don't answer it, or if they knock again and kind of stick their head in and say, hey, are you, can I talk to you for a minute? This is where you say, um, well, I am busy and is this an emergency? And they can tell you what, they, what question they had for you and you make the decision is what they're asking you more important than what you're working on. And remember from planning, this was a high priority project appointment that you were working on. So it has a lot of value. And so you decide is what they brought to you more important than what you're working on? Or is what you're working on more important than what they are asking you? And if it is, you can say, I'm busy right now, but if you come back at three o'clock, we can work on it then, okay? Now you have to be consistent with it because if you just let them come on in and start talking and it's not an emergency, then you've defeated the purpose of making an appointment with yourself and closing your door to have that focus time, okay? So you have to make that decision. And remember, you have to manage your time or other people will manage it for you, okay? So that's one way with drop-in visitors. Um, there's also a way of putting a time limit. So another slight edge is if somebody knocks on your door or stops by your cubicle and says, hey, do you have a minute? Can I talk to you about this or that? Put a time limit on it and say, okay, I have about 10 minutes. Come on in, we can talk for 10 minutes. And then once that 10 minutes is up, if you haven't um, accomplished what you needed to do or finished talking or finished the conversation, you might say, all right, this is more involved. Let's make another time to get together where we can really put some thought into this. Or, and, and just say, I need to get back to what I'm doing, right? So you've put a time limit on it so they know we've either got to be done in 10 minutes or we're going to have to set another time and you can get back to what you were working on. That's very important. Another way to handle drop-by visitors is maybe if you're on your laptop and you're um, typing away and you're working or you're researching something and you're looking on the computer, if somebody stops by, keep your fingers on the keyboard. <laughs> That's a physical cue to them that you're working and that you're focused and that you're you need them to either say what they have to say real quickly, but you need to get back to work. It's not being rude. It's not being unprofessional. It's managing your time. And that's a high payoff activity for you, which is a slight edge. So you want to take control of managing your own time. Okay. All right. Another slight edge that I want to talk to you about that is a huge interrupter for most people, and I hear about this from my clients all the time when we're in our classes that they struggle with, is email. 
okay? And email is a huge interrupter. And I have to be careful when I say this to a lot of folks because in a lot of company cultures, it is expected for you to immediately reply to an email when it comes in. Now, <clears throat> that is not how it should be. That is not being productive. It's not being, um, it's not managing your time well if you automatically immediately reply to an email as soon as it comes in. Again, that slight edge, sometimes we have to change our mindset that, okay, example, part of my job is to facilitate classes. And I may be in a class for two or three hours at a time. During that time, I can't answer an email right away, right? It has to wait until later. And that's okay. I'm doing my job. So that same concept applies if you're working on a project or you're doing a report or something of that nature that you don't immediately have to reply to that email. Give yourself some space that you finish what you're doing and then you can go and reply to the email. And this is how I changed my way of managing my email so that my emails were not managing me. Okay, and this is might be a little bit harder to do, but I promise if you try it and once you get into it, it's a game changer. It saves you so much time. And what that is with your email is to decide that you're only going to check your emails two or three times a day. Did you fall out of your chair when I said that? <laughs> Um, because I know that is such a, a foreign concept to a lot of people. But let me explain. If, if I decide to do that, then I can give myself 100% focus when I am answering my emails, right? And along with that, we have to turn off our email notifications. So if you didn't fall out before, maybe you fell out on that one right? Um, turning off your email notifications is huge. And a lot of people think, well, I don't need to do that. It doesn't bother me. But every time you get an email notification and over in that corner of your screen, it pops up, a new email came in. It still takes your focus away from what you were working on to look over to the corner, read what it was. It still distracted you from what you were working on. So turn off those email notifications and then decide for me, um, maybe it's nine o'clock, 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. Um, those are the times I'm going to check my email. And what I did is when I started doing that, I actually put an away message on my email so that whenever anybody sent me an email, an automatic reply went to them saying, thank you for your email. I did get it. I will respond to my emails at 9 a.m., 1 p.m., and 4 p.m., and I will get back to you at that time. So what you've done is you've told them that when you've gotten the email and you've given them a time frame for when you will get back to them. Okay, that's fine. That's okay. Because again, when I'm in my class, I can't respond to an email. So it's okay to not respond immediately. That's an interruption that really takes us off course throughout the lot of our day. So work smarter, smarter not harder. And so then when you do check your emails at those different times, you can be focused on the emails and doing what you need to do at those times. Okay. We can talk about that a little bit more later. Um, and that same concept applies to your phone. Um, the phones are probably one of our biggest interrupters as well. Every time we get um, a notification that we got a new text or we've got a new email or we've got this or we've got that. Every time you look at your phone, it takes you away from what you are concentrating on, what you are working on. Same concept. 
turn off the notifications if you are in a focused time that you really need to be getting something done, okay? All right, the other thing I wanna talk about is um, goal setting. So when we talk about being successful and being um, a slight edge above the average, everybody has to have goals that you're working towards. We all have to have something that we are working on. And so, you know, don't make it harder than it is. The same concept applies if it's a big goal, a small goal, um, a daily goal, weekly goal, long-term, short-term, personal, professional. Um, if I have a report that's due on Friday, okay, so that's my weekly goal. And when I start on Monday, my weekly goal is that I have to have this report done on Friday. So what do I have to do in order to ensure that I'll accomplish that goal and have it done, my report done by Friday? I have to break it down into action steps. And what are the things that I need to do to accomplish that goal during the week? I might have to do on Monday, I might need to gather information. On Tuesday, I might have to have a meeting with somebody to get more information on a part of the report. Those are what we call action steps. Those are things I need to do in order to accomplish that goal. That's how we manage our time. That's how we manage our focus on where we put our energy and our time so that we can accomplish the goals that we need to get done. And I promise you, whether it's an athlete, whether it's a business professional, anybody who is hugely successful will tell you that they have goals. I've never seen anybody who's been successful that says that they don't have goals. Um, I would love to talk to you in more detail about that because again, that is something that I'm very passionate about, but I have very limited time right now. Um, but goals are a slight edge that we all have to have and there's no way to be successful without them, period. Uh, I can't say it any more plain than that, okay? Um, and I just want to leave you with this too. Uh, there are so many slight edges and so many things that we can do that are easy. It's not difficult. It's just things that we have to start doing, right? And this is the key, is that you have to be consistent and you have to keep doing them, all right? The way we are conditioned and we have habits the way we think, the way we act is based on our conditioning and our habits. And anytime you do something new for the first time, think about, you know, if you play a sport or an instrument or a new computer software, right, that you have to learn. The first time you do anything that's new, it's going to seem a little awkward at first, Right. So all these slight edges that I've given you about minimizing interruptions or setting goals um, or planning your day, it's going to seem awkward at first until you are consistently doing it. And the more you do it, the better you become at it. The more you do it, the more comfortable and confident you are. So you have to be consistent and be determined that you're going to make these changes and the goal of making these changes is to help you be more successful and to manage your time and manage your day better than you are now. It's not hard. You just need to do it and you need to start somewhere. So with these that I've given you right now, um, I would start with those because those are really big ones that make a huge impact on your day and your productivity. So with that being said, I'm very excited to see everybody uh, Thursday night, the 22nd, where we can go into a lot more detail and talk a lot more about these slight edges. But um, just think about working smarter, not harder, and we'll do it together. Okay, I look forward to seeing you on Thursday night and we can talk in a lot more detail about that. And again, thank you for your time. And again, my name is Lois James and I'm with OpEx Solutions and I'll see you soon.